In my recent Japan tour, I met many stalwarts of photography. And one person who stood out in the crowd there was one of my favorites, Ted Forbes. He has his own channel, The Art of Photography. And I must tell you that if you have not listened to him, you must go and listen to him. Japan, the sh schedule was very, very tight because we had Panasonic conference going on and we had to do on-field shoot also, doing, doing the review testing of uh, the camera, uh, S5 Mark II. But still, I am so thankful to Ted that he could really spare some time out talking with me, discussing for 5-7 minutes, uh, answering my questions and um, I just want to share the same interview, a kind of chit chat, not a, not a detailed interview, kind of chit chat with you here. Before I begin with the video, uh, let me talk something about Ted himself because I bumped into his channel some 3-4 years back and I have been hooked on to his, his content, whatever he shares in, through his YouTube videos. And I must say that in this crowd of photographers, including people like me, who talk a lot about camera gears and technicalities and what is what should be the f-stop and 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 blah 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 he is the one person who stands out from the crowd talking about the philosophical part of photography what to do what not to do and and uh, how to improve your photography without even talking about the gear or the settings or the exif details nothing of that sort and if you have not heard him you must go and watch all his videos that you can. I mean, your life will change. This is a promise from my side. The video was recorded on mobile phone because it was so impromptu, so all of a sudden kind of a moment that we just did not have time to set it up because we were just heading out for another shoot. And so apologies for the, uh, the quality that you might see that it, it's not up to the mark probably, um, but that's the way it is. At least you can see it, you can listen to him, and you can seek inspiration. So without wasting any more time, let's dig into it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. All right, hit it. Yeah, so uh, wonderful meeting you, sir. Wonderful to meet yeah, you, yeah. Jesse. So this guys, has been fun. Yeah, guys, yeah, <laughs> I have with me uh, Ted Forbes. Uh, you know him better from uh, the art of photography. <laughs> and uh, he's been my inspiration and you all know that uh, where do I get the ideas from also and uh, got to ask him a couple of things um, so just wanted to check with you uh, yeah a little this way yeah. yeah so you talk a lot about the philosophical part of photography mm -hmm. how did you start getting into that was it always like this or were you actually doing a lot of gear stuff earlier no, yeah, so it's always been like that because I don't have formal mm. training in photography. Okay. Uh, my formal training is from music. Okay. So when I got into photography, uh, I wanted more information, I wanted to learn, so I was looking at books. And music has theory and all these other things that go into it. Photography, it does, but it's not the same. So a lot of what I did was I brought a lot of my stuff from music into photography and I yeah. would speak. Uh, you know, they're similar. They're very creative, both of them. Uh, there's form, there's uh, notes, there's abstract, there's things that you're familiar with. And so that formed the basis for a lot of the philosophy approach that I have. So it just, it felt natural to do that. And uh, it's something that I still, still do. It helps me to think about it. So that's what yeah. I try to teach to others. So. Yeah, that's very interesting because, because most people, uh, especially in the beginner and the mid beginner level stage, mm -hmm. They still are of the belief that when you buy a new camera, you yes. improve. Yeah. Is oh, it, absolutely. Yeah. Is it is it actually true, or no. is it partly of true, it's not or what? You yeah. know that. No, it's not true at all. And it's it's it, and I, the other reason that I, I've taken that approach is I remember when I started out and I had no money and you know I had to shoot on really cheap film cameras all the time and I learned how to develop my own film to save some money there and so for me it was just easier to. Uh, kind of take it from that approach. So when I take it from my approach now, I know that there are people in that position. That they, they and, and the truth is, is you don't need the most expensive equipment. You should be able to work with what you have. Those old film cameras, there were certain things like macro. I didn't have a macro lens. So yeah. I figured out you could yeah. turn the lens around <laughs> yeah, yeah. and shoot that way. And so you, you come up with, with solutions for things that I think make you more creative when you have to work for them. Yeah. So for me, I always want to make people feel better about 
the stuff that they have. You can be a better photographer without having to spend money right now. Absolutely. And so that's always been, I mean, it's fun. And, and I know that the equipment can be inspirational too. Uh, but I think that, that the inspiration comes from other places as well. Absolutely. That, that's something very interesting because um, uh, you talk about bringing inspiration from music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've not been involved in any, any creative as, um, uh, activities before getting into photography. Mm -hmm. So when, when I look at photography, I try and bring something from the, from, from the normal life scenarios uh, and how you face challenges and how you sol find solutions mm -hmm. to them. That has been photography for me. Yes. And, and uh, it is so interesting to see that how we think about photography beyond cameras. Yeah, yeah. It is camera is just an instrument that that that, that you that's just when mentioned. it becomes very powerful too because it's like <laughs> I think anything in life, uh, you know, we all draw inspiration. You you, you have the yeah. music for me and you've got yeah. your sources and and you know we're in Japan in this beautiful garden yeah. right now yeah. and like yeah. even the way that this is so highly manicured and yeah. and uh, and kept and and anything can be inspiring. I think it Absolutely. all falls form and beauty and function and uh, yeah. I think it helps actually to borrow from other things. I think if you only look at photography. It's really easy to start looking like somebody yeah. that you look up to, like whether it's Henri Cartier, Bresson, whoever. Yeah. And you don't want to do that. You want to have your own voice. And so yeah. I think reaching outside of photography is a big part of that too. That's uh, another one one question. Uh, not not stretching stretching it long. We know that AI art is really becoming a rage these days. Yes. And uh, there have been people who's been talking about where the photography or the creativity or the artists mm -hmm. are at threat. Um, what is your thought? What are your thoughts on that? With AI, I, I think we're such, we're so early right now. It, it could turn into something that I'm not even imagining right now yeah, that actually yeah. is very useful. Yeah. I think some of it can be useful, like, you know, Lightroom now with the auto masking, where yeah. it can detect the subject. That saves you time. Yeah. And so I will do stuff like that if I need to brighten a subject or I need yeah. to darken a background yeah. or mess with the sky. Um, but there is a point, I feel like, with AI where it is too much. Like, sky replacement isn't something that I do too much. Yeah. Um, uh, moving the face around like you can do in Photoshop. Yeah, I'd rather have that right in camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think there probably is a use for it. And it's so new and it's so exciting right now and a lot of people jump on that. I just don't see it as a creative replacement at this point. Yeah, and, and um, I, was, I, was, I was another thought. Um, I, I don't know whether you'll agree or not because the moment things become easier with going with time, mm -hmm. they start losing their significance as well. Sure. Because because uh, it's about you going out, you putting your thoughts together and creating an image. Always. Rather than sitting in front of the computer and, and making it happen with just a few keywords. Mm -hmm. So do you think that in times to come, as AI becomes more popular and makes things even a lot easier for us as artists or, mm -hmm. or, or even trying to create art at the snap of a finger? Sure. Do you think that artists will become even more relevant at that point of time? Yeah, individual know. creativity. Uh, maybe. I don't think that AI will ever replace. If you consider creativity is, is this desire as humans that we want to make something. We yeah. want to create something. Yeah. Yeah. And today that looks different than it did in the 1940s or earlier. Or even the 1800s when photography was brand new. I mean, digital cameras and daguerreotypes are I mean, so far away from each other. So I don't know what it's going to look like in the future, but I don't think that the AI will ever replace just that fundamental need to create and make things. Yeah. And I hope that that's the case. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope I, to. <laughs> everyone would lose interest. I mean, that's what keeps us, we all live within our own technology and we all live in the world that is today. Yeah. We don't have a choice with that. Um, I would love to live in the 1960s sometimes, yeah. but you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you don't. And, you and don't. but it's that fundamental need to, to, to make things and create. And I don't think that, that artificial intelligence would ever ever take that role. Yeah. It might in, it help embellish, like you're saying, it yeah, might yeah. make things easier, it might make new things possible that weren't done before. Yeah. Uh, that's certainly the case with digital versus wet plate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting, you know, I'm not afraid of it. Yeah. yeah. Great, great, great. Um, and one last question before we really sure. wind up is that, um, do you think that current breed of photographers who are trying to join in, they are more obsessed with the instant gratification than actually trying to learn. Is this something which is which is being a problem area for uh, the create the uh, growth of photography per se, the creativity part of it? Yes, I, I think right now the language is changing, and it's mm. it's it's not just that photographers want the instant gratification. You can make that argument for Polaroid, right? Yeah, you take the yeah, picture and yeah, develop. Yeah, yeah. uh, with now with digital, with phones. Yeah. Uh, 
the bigger problem is that we post that on social media or you put that somewhere and, and that trend is all about what's in the moment. Like as soon as your photograph is 24 hours old, Instagram's not showing it anymore. Yeah. So there's such a fast uh, pace that's going on there and I think that influences how people are doing it from a technical standpoint. So I think right now we're in a weird phase where people are getting used to that. Uh, it is unfortunate because there are things that you could learn that are, require slowing down. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely an instant gratification thing right now. But I, I would hope that one day we settle into something. And, and I still think that anytime you're making work that's going to last, mm -hmm. Instagram doesn't doesn't accomplish that for you. Yeah, you're going to have to um, at some point be, I hope, interested in something that is more meaningful. That is, and it's not to bash Instagram, but it has have, its place. But it's yeah, just in yeah. an instant. That's yeah, it's yeah, in the name. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that, that that certainly does. Thank you. And in the end, what would be your advice to anybody who is trying to enter into photography right now, or maybe um, after a few years they have found themselves getting stuck and not being able to move? You got to get out of the rut. Yeah. Uh, you just got to push forward, make things, find things to, that that inspire you, uh, whether that. It's going to a new place, uh, whether that is just trying something new, whether that's staying up late, I mean, little things. Just try to break it up and, and, and keep persevering because it, it's a long road and, it, and that happens. Um, we've all felt it where you get burnt out or you get stuck in, in a specific thing. You're not improving. So you got to find something to break out of that that you're not doing right now. That's the hard part. Yeah. People don't want to yeah. do something new. They want to yeah. continue to do it the same way. Fear of losing. Fear of losing. And yeah, yeah you've got to uh, allow yourself to lose once in a while. It's okay. You'll, yeah, you'll start yeah, winning after yeah, that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Thank uh, you. Wonderful, wonderful speaking to you. Thank and you so much. Having this was met you in person. Absolutely. And, uh, this is a dream come true for me. Yeah, this was fun. So, guys, so. this was Ted for you. The art of <laughs> photography. Do follow his channel. And, and I mean, your life will change. Oh, I you. promise you that. <laughs> Thanks, Thank man. You. We'll see you guys later. Yeah.